back to Elizabeth Hogarth Designs. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new collection from the team at Kanban Crafts. Kanban Crafts is a well-known UK brand and they have recently been brought out by another company, Katie Sue Designs. So, we've got a collaboration of beautiful papers, uh, boxes, sentiments, peelables, everything coming together. And I thought today what I would do is I would show you some of the samples that I've made, but also the starting point of how to put together the stepper cards designed by Katie Sue and then matching them up with the papers from the Kanban Crafts brand within the umbrella of Katie Sue. So let's begin by taking a look at the papers. This Kanban Crafts collection is called Nightingale Square and here we start with the 12 by 12 papers. You've got 48 double sided sheets, 190 PSM, so they're good for construction as well as your backing papers and your main toppers. There are 16 different designs because you've got double sided sheets, so you've got 8 designs on one side and a different 8 on the other. So let's take a look at them. They heavily feature the nightingale and various other birds and you'll see that there are some superimposed floral and textural images. This page here can be used as 6x6 card backgrounds and you've got four in total. You've then got a larger image which would be fantastic for a scrapbooking page. I really like this layering up so you can see that you've got stripe patterns, then you've got fleur de lis and then you've got the bolder images of the birds nesting with the flowers. So here we've got a creamier page mixed with some pinks and some blues and you've got this sweet little birdhouse in the corner. So I've been cutting these elements down and using them as toppers. But you'll see as we've also go on that we've got some peelables. You've got another page here of more pink hues with the floral elements. And then this page here is very handy because you can cut them down for note cards or tags or just individual toppers for your cards. Here's another larger 12 by 12 image and again these can be cut down but if you're a scrapbooker then by all means keep these elements in and then you've got enough clear space to build up your page design. You've got a similar page of the 4 by 4s This image here is one of my particular favourites and I do like that you've got some old fashioned uh, exercise book lines on here as well because then these are great for your little journaling books we we'll quickly flick over to the back the backs are more backgrounds but very very useful so you've got your lines and your musical notes you've got shades of blue and bronze a beautiful leaf design on the back here and then these curled pages so you haven't got main images on this side but you can see how beautifully these colours coordinate so the imagery on the front is beautiful but equally if you just want to use these back pages these would make beautiful beautiful handbags and covering up boxes or exercise books really really can do a lot with these very adaptable papers so you can see you've got eight different designs on the front eight different designs on the back and lots to work with there so that's your nightingale square 12 by 12 papers this show will be on Create and Craft towards the end of April and the team at Katie Sue have also provided me with some die cut leaves so these just peel away so you've got your oak leaves, your rose leaves I quite like these ones here that are a little bit more make-believe 
and then you've got a great set of flowers where the paper designs are being imprinted and again you can die cut, cut these out, they've all been die cut for you so it's just a matter of pressing them as you go and I'll show you how I have used these. Then we have a great set of peelables, so again these mirror the Nightingale Square and you've got some really really pretty sentiments here and the beauty of these is, is that when you peel them away you've got a clear background so they take on the colour that you're putting them onto and I'll show you more of that a little bit later. So I've got three pages here and you can see all the different designs. I was lucky enough to receive a package of goodies from the team at Katie Sue and included in that pack were these very versatile stepper cards. So rather than showing you how to do each stepper card, I want to quickly give you some tips on how to put them together and then I'll show you how I made the designs look slightly different. So my top tip is to get yourself a bone folder and to also try and work out where your mountain and valley folds are. So your mountains go up and your valleys go down. Don't press too hard at the beginning. But what you're going to do is you're going to imagine that we've got, this is like a centrefold uh, step card. So the front of the card is going to be a mountain. So we've got two mountains and you'll see that I'm being firm with the point but not uh, pressing them down completely. I'm not bothered about this part in the middle at the moment. So we're going to go mountain valley mountain and i'm pinching them together valley mountain and then you want to now firm down those folds and bring in your bone folder and then at this point Press firmly on the fold at the top and you have yourself a central stepper card. This is how I decorated my centrefold stepper card. I took the 12 by 12 papers and I cut down one of the bigger images and I placed that in the centre part here. I then opted for making one large panel along the bottom here. You can also cut all the way down here and then mirror up this size with the side panels. I've added some of the die cut flowers and embellished them with some pearls of my own. And then I've coordinated the sides with the floral papers. So I simply pull this out and then you can see all the graduated steps. If you open up the card you've got one of the peelables and this time I've laid it on some pale pink card just to bring in some of the colours from the roses on the front. So the peelables are a really good way of finishing off your cards professionally so this is step of card number two if you know how to do these then by all means skip forward a little bit but i'm very aware that i have new subscribers to my channel that haven't seen these things before so it's always worthwhile just practicing and uh, showing how easy these cards are put together so again don't worry too much about the top fold here you're going to take the front of the card and you want to take your mountain then we're going to go valley mountain valley mountain and this time you can see you've got much wider steps along the side here you could even turn this one into uh, a wedding card because it's rather like a church with a 
with a spire with a tower and then you've got the side where all the pews are so again look you've got your tall tower on the side and then you've got your three longer stepper cards these particular cards measure just over eight and a quarter inches which is about 21 centimeters in width and the height of them is just shy of six inches um, about 15 centimeters uh, luckily katie sue do provide you with the larger envelopes with this particular set but you can make boxes which i'll show you a little bit later on for this wider stepper card i have taken the array of die cut flowers and i used a ball tool just to curve the center and a pokey tool to flex out the ends and then they are arranged in height order and embellished again and then i finished it off with one of the sweet little bird houses. Our final stepper card has a wider panel to the left and narrower panels to the right. So we're going to go mountain, valley, mountain, which we're going to pinch again, valley, mountain. Once you get into the swing of it, these stepper cards are relatively easy to make. So again you've got a wider panel here which is round about four and three quarter inches round about 12 inches in width meaning that the total card itself is again round about eight and a quarter inches 21 centimeters you'll get three different designs in each pack and you can decorate them accordingly this this time i've taken the nightingale and I cut one of the panels for the background and then I die cut the nightingale again and layered it up with some 3D glue gel. The papers here all come from that same uh, paper so everything coordinates together so you're just following through the design. To finish off the card I added a peelable to a piece of greener card and then I die cut the centre using a circle die. Again we've got another peelable inside and it really is a good way of finishing off your card. So those are our three main steppers which as you can see are pretty easy to put together when you know how. But I want to also show you that you can cut down the cards to make smaller versions. So if we take the stepper card that has got the narrower panel to the left, the church design one that I showed you, what I've done here is I have cut off part of the side steps here. And I've created a much smaller card which measures just shy of five and a half inches which is around about 14 centimeters and obviously the height is still the same so that's just short of six inches which is around about 15 centimeters. You may remember seeing this set of Cambion cutter dies when I made the Belfleur cards so they've got these really easy to use corset dies so you've got the tailor's dummy which you can make up and then you've got these different corsets so what i've done here is i've cut the tailor's dummy out of gold mirror card and then created a green corset from the papers all of these designs are from the papers, so I flipped them over and used the musical notes and the text pages. So again, you've got the stepper card on the side, and I've used the Kanban Roaring Twenty Sentiments here, which are quite Art Deco, which I think goes well with the corsets, and I've adapted them to create the happy birthday sentiments so it's a really sweet little card 
and I raised up the corset with some 3D gel and added some of my own gemstones. I felt that this particular card warranted a box and I'll show you how to make these boxes in a moment but I have decorated the front using one of the panels and the text on the side and then when you open it up you can use the papers because you've got enough of them to decorate the inside and if you look carefully here you've got another peelable just finishing off the inside of the box so you can place that in there and I think that makes a really personal gift for anyone so now we're going to have a look at making these boxes which again will be available from the team at Katie Sue so within your pack you've got sets of square boxes and rectangular boxes which I'll show you in a moment so they come in two slightly different sizes you can just about see there's about two mil difference between the box sizes and this is to allow you to make your base and your lid it's already scored for you but what you do need to do is to gently work around the main square and just fold down the pieces So that was our mountain fold. When you get them home, it will be quite obvious which one is the mountain and which one is the valley. The mountain ones are on the top and the valley ones are on the bottom. So to make these boxes up, the easiest thing to do is to talk yourself through it with your bone folder. So we're going to go mountain mountain so we're working from the inside out sorry we're working from the outside in mountain valley and you keep working round so we're going to go mountain mountain valley You then have your sides that are ready to push in. This part here has got a perforated line and this is, means that you want to push these in. So place the top of the box away from you and then very gently lift up the sides from that inside edge and in the same time take your thumbs and push in those perforated corners and you'll find that it all just lifts together at that point you want to push in the two sides so that the top flap is going over them both and the fold towards you goes down two folds on the side go over the top so you can see this is number one this went down first the two sides and then you turn it over push in the two sides lift up the base bring it over and pull down again that's the first one and then we'll go through it again quickly so mountain mountain valley then when you have your two boxes slot them in together and you've got one box ready to decorate so that can be your straightforward box to decorate and these boxes here measure six inches just over slightly over 15 centimeters square once you tried making one box you might want to try this take two boxes and then a piece of longer card and wrap it around the first box 
stick the two wrap arounds together to make yourself a draw and stick a piece on the back to hold the drawers in place so you can open these up and you've got yourself a set of mini drawers I put a button on the front and then to finish it off and make it a personal card I made an easel card which I mounted on gold mirror card and I made a topper with the flowers if you want more detail on how to make these things then leave me a comment below and then in the future I'll try and make another tutorial to show some of these things in more detail and here is another matching handbag now you might have seen one of my videos from a couple of weeks ago and I'll leave you the link up above where I was using the COVID packaging so again this is the inside of the COVID box and I've decorated them I've used them velcro as a button and I've used those really versatile flowers but what I've done this time is I've layered about three or four of them up together to give them a little bit of stability and then when you open it up I've turned these into note cards um, I've added one of the Holly Hobby stamps and then all of them are decorated front and back because you've got enough papers I've tried to add the lines to the back and then that will make a nice note card gift complete with the handbag but what you can also do if you don't have the COVID packaging you can adapt these boxes and all that you would do is you would create yourself a opening part here by using this part of your box sealing it in together you would have to take away this area here you would seal it in together and then this part here would become your flap that comes over the top again if you want to see it in more detail then leave me a comment below and I'll add it to my list of tutorials so it can either be your Covid packaging handbag and who would have thought that Covid packaging could look so beautiful or again you can adapt one of the square boxes we also have rectangular boxes and I'll just quickly show you the sizing of it so again it's it's mountain mountain valley so this box here measures five and a half inches which is round about 14 centimeters by seven and a half inches there or thereabouts which is about 19 centimeters so again you can use these to put your taller cards in or some chocolate bars but I turn this one into a mini note card holder just by adding a flap into this part here and again I've added one of the peelables to the back here to finish it off and I've used the papers on the back of the uh, 12 by 12 papers on the flaps of the envelope. So just nice little finishing touches. The peelables are then added onto some white card. And you've got really stylish, simple and effective note cards. My last idea incorporates the Kanban rounded label toppers and I like these because of the number of nests within the main die so it was a matter of taking one of the larger panels you can make them as large or small as you like and taking the ornaments of the papers that were left and creating my very own set of tags so they can either be tags with uh, sentiments using the peelables or you could turn it into a journaling notebook because you can use the lines to write upon and then it's uh, kept together with a hoop 
and then you can add your own ribbons to the side. I hope these projects will inspire you to use the glorious papers called Nightingale Square. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you see, please do consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can, of course, follow me across social media. And there is a dedicated Kanban and Katie Sue Facebook group should you be interested in joining that. I look forward to welcoming you back here very soon. Bye bye for now.